um, uh, daylilies are actually edible. Edible. Mm -hmm. um, the entire thing, I guess, if you if you uh, do it at the right time. Flowers people are accustomed to. I don't really like to dig up my plants to harvest things, but the uh, they put down a little rhizome or whatever below ground that is edible as well. So, mm -hmm. and the shoots when they come up, get young. And this is Kathleen's another part of the herb garden. Um, you have the butterfly bush, one butterfly bush that uh, she just dug up, so she can let her kiwi kiwi fruit wine, vine go over uh, the dog uh, the dog run here so that's really neat she's able to grow kiwi fruit not I hardy bought, kiwi yeah i bought this uh, kiwi by accident and uh the the one on the right is the male the one on the left is the female yeah. they're dioecious and uh, my experience with hardy kiwi was the males were so puny i couldn't keep them alive so i put the male in what I thought was the better position. The soil was better in that spot, and it's lower where it'll get more moisture, moisture, and it's just taken off. Well, it flowered last year, and the female did not, so obviously I didn't get any fruit. So, um, but so far, so good. I mean, I'm, ex I'm ecstatic about it. I think it's gorgeous. Evie is yeah. just climbing over the fence, so she will uh, trail it over a trellis. Um, and then in between the two kiwi fruits, she has some really neat blackberry. So this, this is, is a, a special one. Uh, Primark Fee Freedom, which is a um, primocane blackberry. Most blackberries are floricane, which means that um, it is supposed to be capable of putting fruit on the new growth in the fall. The spring's growth in the fall uh, is supposed to be able to produce fruit. Now, we, it hasn't done that yet. Typically, they produce, uh, the blackberries produce um, their crop on last year's canes in the spring. And it side shoots on the last year's canes where you expect to find it. So we shall see how that plays out. I have another service bear, berry here. It did bloom. It did not fruit. Hmm. I don't, don't. Interesting. I can't. Really big. It's, so yeah, it's, it's a very bigger than the one tall, front. vigorous service berry. It looks like it's putting its energy into growth and not making fruit. Maybe it's too happy. It's right next to the compost pile, so it's probably digging in and eating all that stuff. But it flowered beautifully. Ah, interesting flowered but it did not produce fruit. Gwen is running around, the little doggy. Beautiful this Gwen. This is a, a Red Lake um, gooseberry and uh, they fruit, they uh, flower and they seem to do some fruit. I, I, like I said, I think if you drop them that they drop their fruit first thing and it's still in a pot because the Ooh. soil was so bad that uh, digging a big enough hole to put it in was a challenge and I didn't want the water to run off so I put it in a pot. I'm sure it's rooted at the bottom. The pot is sunk deeply into the ground. But um, why I can't keep the fruit on there is uh, something I'm going to have to work on. Because obviously the, the uh, bush itself is plenty big enough to support a crop. Uh, lots of cool herbs here also. She has um, some um, now the name escapes me. Sorrel. <laughs> you have the different varieties of sorrel. I was lucky enough to get one sorrel from Kathleen too. There's the rhubarb, right? And you have some other neat stuff. Anything special here? Is this a winter savory? No, no, no? that's the it's brunette. Like, oh, brunette. brunette has a cucumber flavor. I keep, <coughs> I keep confusing them, sorry. And uh, I haven't um, gotten around to looking it up to see how much food value it has. It's a dark green leafy vegetable, so obviously it, um, Brunette. putting some of the little leaves in your salad is worth doing. Hi Gwen. So these, uh, this is echinacea, and interestingly the parent plant is over there. It's been really good at seeding itself. I, uh, it's, uh, reseeds. Yeah, it, uh, volunteers come up and, um, I know, I know. Successful. 
We have uh, somebody asking for attention here. And then this is uh, your nice raspberry. That's a good one to grow in the pots. This one is, uh, uh, let's see raspberry again. Shortcake. Raspberry shortcake. Which is a sort of a dwarf. Dwarf. And thornless. It's, it's sold um, for the purposes of people wanting to grow. Let's go really quickly, actually. Can we go in your dog? Okay. Dog run for the couple trees. So she has um, this a, is a separate persimmon. doggy area, and which uh, is the neat. Persimmon that they were kind of late. Um, it took them a while, but I think most of the grafts I put on here took, which made me really happy. And I did get several fruit last year. Um, they're reputed to be another one of these uh, late maturing things that. Uh, puts um, that doesn't fruit real well in early years but um, I did get some fruit last year so I would have to say that I am really pleased because I love persimmons <clears throat> yummy so persimmon is doing good here fertilized by the doggy and chocolate you have different grafts on here so they, this, these ones you did not color paint I only uh, painted the ones Done, done you? in a particular year, and I may have forgotten this one. I don't know. See, this is what the fruit looks like, uh -huh. and it actually dropped uh, several hundred baby fruits this year. So um, I'm just hoping it's done dropping its fruit. So this is about um, nine, ten feet tall already. It's uh, over the six foot fence. And we're going through the doggy. This is the plum that she couldn't the, the <laughs> yes, couldn't so we photograph froze. on the other side because of the internet connection. This is methylene plum and it's grafted onto a Santa Rosa. With um, a... I assume methylene is a uh, is an Asian. I looked them up and I put I grafted the Asian plums onto the Asian plum and the European plums onto the European plum, and uh, I'm pretty sure I got them right up because I was probably careful this time. I They're did. heavy, those branches are so heavy with fruit, they just uh, drooping over the fence and laying on the fence literally. It will uh, die if it breaks off. <laughs> so, this is chokeberry. Chokeberry? It's not choke cherry, no, choke it's chokeberry. Choke what is a chokeberry? Well, it's supposed to be one of your super fruit foods. Huh. So is it a little bit similar to elderberry almost? Like comes in little clumps? No idea. Chokeberry. I Are think they're uh, one of the ones that is not super tasty and so mm -hmm. therefore people don't. Obviously that's why it's called chokeberry. I've eaten choke cherries in Illinois which grow I think wild but I'm not sure. Um, never eaten this one so it's cool. And this is oh, the mulberry. And look at that. that. That is, well, 12 feet up in the sky, the mulberry. I'm sure I pruned <clears> it down this winter, too. And, uh, it has some fruit here that's worth And what type of mulberry do you know? Uh, this is that uh, dwarf black ever bearing, I think it is. Okay. But you have some grafts on here, too? No? I do. This is white Pakistan. I put four on there, and um, this one leafed out, and I think it's died. I don't know. Oh yes, that's not looking too good, but there are some. The uh, cyanwood carries enough uh, nu nutrient and so on in it that uh, a lot of times when they leaf out, you don't know whether the graft is taken or not. Yes. And uh, and look who's eating all the berries. And uh, she is, she has, she loves them. She can get all kinds of good Emmy. Oh, lucky doggy. Lucky dog. Things. Yes. <laughs> so That's one healthy one dog. It doesn't look like it took. And mm. um, that one that leaked out, I was all counting on that being good. So mulberries are a little tricky to graft, looks like. Because Kathleen is a good grafter. Now here's one that doesn't look dead. I will be thrilled if this makes it. This is the long black Pakistan. Um, I don't care for the the tiny um, everbearing black. Um, and I got a couple of large.
ground in the dog yard, I won't, you know, you can't eat them. This dog's trained to use this area. And uh, so obviously anything that falls on the ground is a dunner. Now here's your elderberry. This is the Mexican Sambucus Mexicana, which I bought in a nursery. And uh, I have one that at our other place, it was, it's like 15 feet tall and 20 feet long, wide or something rather. It's in a, a uh, planter concreted in, containing it. This one is uh, Sambucus canadensis. It's a uh, uh, Adams. And um, it require, they, they, they're saying that it requires a pollinator. Well, and some places they go and they list the different pollinators and so on. But where I saw it online, it said that any elderberry would make a pollinator. So I'm assuming that it's, that the, <laughs> this one here will do the pollination thing. What is she trying to get? A berry? A what do you see? Yes. One berry stuck in there. <laughs> Aww. She is so, persistent. Um, this one hasn't been in the ground for very long, but it, um, it's worth noting. See, you can see the structure of it down here. Um, they say that the elderberry uh, canes, will, well, a lot of these bush berries, will produce for two or three years, and then they're um, done. And they do die. So there's a matter of going through and removing the dead canes just like there would be with... They're not biennial canes like blackberries, mm -hmm. but they do uh, time out and uh, they have to be cleaned out in order to maintain it. Somewhat like um, pomegranates a little bit, right? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I think these canes will actually die. Now, I don't think pomegranates, mm. I think they just sit there and become non I don't know that for a fact, but some of the bushes, they don't lose their non-productive parts. Right, so really nice. She utilizes the space that's used for the dog. Um, she utilizes it for the fruit trees and shrubs as well, which gets plenty of nitrogen. <laughs> I think less than you think, <laughs> actually. And then we have next area which is going to be the whole vegetable garden well, this, this is uh, kiwi another fruits asian pear. another asian pear and i've done some grafts on there and actually i put on a couple of european pears Chicago hardy, which wasn't very hardy like here, that one died I did. down. Yeah, that one I did ground. not uh, grow from a cutting. It was a tree like this that I bought at a nursery. And uh, this ground is particularly bad right here. But um, for whatever reason, it may be that the, it just didn't, wasn't able to uh, penetrate this rocky ground here. But um, it died all the way to the ground this year. Into its Pretty shocking, and it was late coming back too. So this is a uh, fall gold raspberries. Uh, one way to mm, they're to, coming along. Yeah, one way to uh, manage your your uh, raspberries is to mow them to the ground in the fall or in the spring before they start coming back up, because. Um, and by doing that, you forego your spring crop. But they produce, they are uh, prime cane berries, as unlike the blackberries, which are typically flora cane. But they um, will produce a full crop, or their main crop, actually, on this, the year, uh, new canes for that year. So um, it's different from blackberries. Blackberries, you can't do that. If you roll them around, you can be sure you won't get any. Gold. Pretty gold um, berries here. Yellow. Successful. Very nice. Should we uh, I'll just
just kind of show these a side of vegetables. She has a whole big fence of espaliered apples. Let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight. I can. They all. They're all getting together. <laughs> it's a wall of apples. I can't quite even tell how many. Oh, there's more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, correct. Nine. Nine espaliered apples. Do they have grafts on them too or the individual? Um, I bought the uh, rootstock from Cummings Nursery and I did the original graft on each one of these. Oh. They all took, um, except for two that I had purchased. Um, they all took. And then this year I did some more grafts on them. So, um, and at the time that I did those, uh, I didn't know anything about the varieties I planted. I still don't know anything about most of the varieties that I planted. There are many things I planted here that I've never tasted. Yes, <clears throat> had not uh, gotten much crop yet. Of course, her garden is they less than four years old. Honeycrisp, there is, I saw Spitzenberg, there's Macintosh. These are not four years old. No. Another honey crisp. So, how often do you maintain the branches then? Prune um, them? Uh, frequently. Uh, the comment to be made here is that you should know that, apart from the fact that you need to know where the fruit is before you do the pruning, but um, summer pruning is dwarfing and winter pruning is invigorating. So, espaliers really need to be maintained. Beautifully, the branches are trained, and here is a nice uh, butterfly, butterfly yeah. weed, butterfly weed, vegetables, more figs. I love this. Oh, so yeah. early, it's very early for us. Yes, up in Prescott, mine are just barely starting to My put on some blossoms. Uh, baby so, bok choy. Baby bok choy which I have had come up volunteer and I'm really thrilled. Seeds. Lupini beans. So that's Rose of Sharon. Produce a good tea. Tea? Rose Rose of Sharon? Yep. Okay, I'll have to look this up. I don't know what that is. And now it's a garden area. There's the uh, hardy kiwi here. And the hardy kiwi wine. which The is one on the end, which is the male. Uh, maybe dead. Um, I, uh, sorry. This is a hardy kiwi, but actually it's not uh, growing as well for her as the regular kiwi fruit, which is right. not supposed to be hardy for us, so that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Another giant apple tree, which has, I don't know, 20 grafts or 20 something? 20 grafts. 20, well, it was 20... I don't think I did graft on this one this year, so maybe I did. Yeah, this looks like this year's graph. It does have a few oh, apples. It couldn't be because it's got apples in it. Oh. So, uh, anyway. Uh, oh, those are big. And let's see what variety this is. Some uh, really big size apples already for us. I don't see the tag for this one. I think that was the tag I lost. I did huh. lose that one. A tagless mystery apple. But yes, she has quite a few. It's a golden delicious, but she has a lot of neat, neat, neat heirloom apple varieties that she sourced through a lot of Scion exchanges and other places. So, uh, oh, this, going, uh, crawling under the apple tree. I moved this here. This is a blackberry. I had uh, candy raspberries growing here, and they never did fruit or anything. I had, had other people say negative Ooh. things about it. Oh my goodness, enough. look at that guy. Now this is the black That's satin blackberry. Beautiful. And uh, I do think that um, I'm beginning to be a little reluctant to get enthused about things. Years and years and years and I move it with me when I move. And uh, 
I have never had it travel wow. underground. People were telling me blackberries did that, and I was like, well, I've never seen it happen. Well, now I have some other varieties that do that, so I can understand how they come up with this. But I just, this thing is so productive. Look at this crop, it's ridiculous. I've never seen anything like it on a blackberry, so it's doing every single branch, nook and cranny, is just covered, covered, covered in berries. Wow, that's really, that in itself is worth <laughs> to show. Wow, that's crazy. So you have it growing at your house now? This one, yeah, all four, yes. all four took that you gave me, so we'll see. Okay, now four this blinders. is a Reliance grape. And wow, your grapes are grape, ahead of mine too. My grape uh, friend is saying that this is the best one. Reliance grape Reliance. is doing great so here. And this is uh, another rhubarb. I think this one is happier than some of the others. They like the shade. This one has more shade here under the apple tree and we're um, squishing under the ground, under the tree, because it's very dense between the grape, blackberry, rhubarb and apples. And here is more strawberries and grapes are hanging down. And she creates a lot of shade with uh, plants being close together. Another rhubarb and more strawberries. These strawberries, um, I'm happy. They're way, doing way better than the ones that I rescued from my own garden. I bought these from Stark Brothers, and they're TriStar, which was a recommended variety. And the berries are larger, and there are more of them than on my other varieties. So another, uh, another sorrel, yeah, sure. and another blackberry. Now, that one is, I think, uh, Triple Crown, which is off of the one on the other end of the road here. This uh, Russian kale and the uh, curly kale, and uh, in my opinion, there's no reason not to grow that all the time. It actually makes it through this summer, despite the hot weather here anyway, and it's, uh, I think it's supposed to be biennial, but it just seems to last forever. And through the winter? Yeah, yeah and you can harvest it in the winter. Wow. She grows kale. This uh, wind, this window was supposed to be for something else, but I've decided it makes a, a, a windbreak. So. This is a windbreak on a raised bed. Mm -hmm. Way and, of it. and the uh, trellises are, uh, that's actually a hog panel. Similar to cattle panel, but the <coughs> rooms closer together. I don't like that. more blackberries there and I'm, I'm uh, collecting seed from my lettuces. Collecting yeah. lettuce seed and uh, the onions. This one is interesting because this is Amish deer's tongue lettuce. And uh, what's special about it? Oh it's just a heritage, heritage lettuce. lettuce. Amish what? Deer, Amish deer tongue. Deer tongue. Yeah. Hmm. Does it taste good? Yeah. Okay, and you have some cold weather crops, hot weather crops. Um, that's your other grape? Yeah, now this one's been in longer than the others. And uh, I had another one just as big, but uh, one of my friends commented that it wasn't very tasty. And when I started thinking about it, I realized that I hadn't been paying very good atten attention because he was right, it wasn't very ta tasty. So I have cabbage. It's looking better than some of the other stuff. And she had some problems with bugs eating the seedlings, roly polies, and earwigs. So you did a lot of traps. I have a lot of a traps. Lot of, yes. Uh, the de. Got in here. The there. Yes, they Take all a picture. inside. <laughs> floating in there so so there are a number of different ways you can trap but this one is the one I settled on because it's just got some little holes in the top but what I like about it is that you don't have to do anything you don't have to actually come out and kill them you don't actually really have to empty the traps you don't have to do anything which is perfect for me now I tried the beard traps and the beer evaporated and the dog 
lapped it up. So between the, it didn't last 24 hours. This has been in there several days. What it is, what it has as a bait is it's got oil, like a cooking oil, mm -hmm. and some uh, sardine can oil mm -hmm. poured in on top for st to make the for smell. smell. So just oil, just oil, no water or water? No too? water. No water, just oil and sardine now oil. Now it doesn't evaporate. And artichokes. Because it's along. got a lid. She's pretty good about not getting into it. Got artichokes. Artichokes. These, uh, that particular one's a pretty good one. So there's uh, four or five raised beds all along here. And this is that same wall behind us with espalier apples. Um, so this is oh. my favorite green these days. Oh, yummy, yes. Absolutely <laughs> delicious. And it's all came out from seed, seeded itself. The, uh, the weed, the lamb last squatters. Year I had one Tastes here. better than it was spinach. This tall, one of these. Wow. And it put out all the seed. These were all volunteers. The mm. birds would land on it and eat the seed, and they would sway in the wind. It was really very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> But it uh, really receded. That's just enough for the reason tons and tons of meals here. Yeah, the reason it's uh, um, a weed is because it's a very successful, well suited plant. And uh, obviously, it does well here in this heat no wilting, no nothing. Um, it doesn't get bitter. I mean, I as it goes it to seed, yeah, so spinach will bolt like really quickly in this heat, but this guy, I mean, it's kind of going a little to seed now, but still tastes really good. It can definitely seem like we stand much more heat than spinach. All right. Um, it's, spinach has been mm. enough of a disappointment. I'm not sure I want to try it again. We made some quiche and omelet with it, and it's really delicious actually with eggs. <clears throat> so this we was, have this was another organized. herb garden. Herb garden was, and, uh, I kind of like it, but the fact is, uh, there is no place in my yard that's all that far from the back door. But believe it or not, the difference between from here and there is yeah. enough to burn your dinner while you're coming out here collecting your uh, <laughs> herbs. Yeah, it's too far. <laughs> yeah. So this herb garden is too far from the house, so yeah. she's going to do something else here and install a greenhouse, small greenhouse. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably okay. leave those herbs there, but the so I've all established. I've got most of them transplanted over there, cuttings off of them. And the more so, corner uh, pots. Got, well, that's uh, Burgarten sage. This is lovage, which um, lovage uh, is a uh, um, cel celery flavored herb, and I actually, actually think it's highest purposes as a bouquet garni because it's nasty and uh, if you bite into it I think I don't know whether it has a time of life where it's not hmm. but um, I do think that if you put it in your soup or whatever and you take it out you're safe and you get the flavor and all without um, getting that bitter stuff. That's stevia and stevia is not uh, winter hardy here mm -hmm. yep. but or it's said not to be but I so because they say it's not winter hardy I assume that it's seeding it it's it's yeah, seeding it itself. seeds itself now, I don't know that for a fact but that appears to be the case and this is another so this is a red, red flame, flame grape yeah which is uh, producing really well and she said and who ate the the skeletonizers knocked it back to the ground. I very, very nearly lost it one year. Uh, there was a little s sprout that came up from the root and I managed to baby it along to get it back. It's still not as big a vine as it was. Came back all the way a couple years ago from the little sh shoot and now it's growing again and it's intertwined with your here. Now that one so is happy family. That is Triple Crown. I bought that online too. Um, and it, um, a lot of times these 
things never uh, are not inclined to harvest or produce at exactly the same time. And it did seem like it came on later than the black satin, which I, you know, I, I find that to be an extremely productive and useful blackberry. But this one, I felt that it was tastier. And I tend to be a little indiscriminate, but I, uh, I'm trying to pay better attention and I've decided that it's tastier and we'll see if I uh, stick with that analysis. That's a uh, lemongrass. I'm told there is some in cottonwood that is 10 years old. Um, I have not mm. gotten it to winter over yet, so we shall see. I'm trying it in a couple wow. of places. It's amazing. So somebody asked a question earlier. Do you get more problem freezing uh, plants in the pots, or does it really matter for you? They're pretty good, well sheltered though, even though she has them in the pots, it looks to me like like the lemongrass, would it do better straight in the ground versus pot, or do you cover it for the winter, to overwinter it? Well, that is, uh, that particular thing is more of a raised bed than it is a pot. Uh-huh, yeah. Because there is no bottom on it. Oh, but, okay. Um, here's uh, what I would say, I would repeat what I said earlier, and that is most winter kill is a consequence of drought, not temperatures. So, um, Things do dry out worse in pots, so that mm -hmm. would lend yeah. support to the notion that they're more vulnerable in a yeah. pot than if you put them in the ground. So, um, yeah, uh, there's that. Um, so, take your pick. <laughs> but um, if you have it in a pot, of course, you can take your hand truck and drive it in under your shade or put it somewhere and where it might be more sheltered. Trim it back so that it's... The other thing you could do is to drape, uh, drape burlap over it or do one of those things. Yeah. But it is... Uh, the first thing to do if you have it in a pot and you're trying to winter it over is to make certain you don't let it dry out. Hmm. So there's my potato which was wilted completely because the uh, um, dripper got knocked out of the pot yesterday. So she has another potato growing here and uh, also doing some sweet potato slips soon and this one growing in the little raised bed that has no bottom here. And that's your, what? what's a grape? Black over there? manaka. Black manaka, manaka grape, manaka. it's a blackberry. It's only been in the ground a couple years. I did get a, at least one cluster of grapes on it. Last year was a bad, bad year in general for all, all of the fruit. And the last bit of the garden is making a loop back here to the beautiful blackberry that you grow in pots. Blueberry, blueberry I mean, it's blackberry. Blueberry, which is actually making some so blueberries. You need to pick, take a picture over here because it looks like they're doing well. I'm doing something. From this, <laughs> from this bandage right here. <laughs> The blueberries oh, here, 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 right here in the shade. <laughs> so they, it's actually pretty bright here. The, this blueberry plant is in a pot with adjusted soils, but it's in a complete sun all day. Really, doesn't have any any shade morning or night. Blueberries are very poor choice, pretty much all of Arizona because yes. they require a pH around four, the worst five, um, and. Uh, the water coming out of our tap is a good bit more basic or alkaline yeah. than that. So even if you fix the soil perfect when you put cool. the plant in there, you re you water it over <laughs> and over and over and it becomes it. more and more alkaline. Yes. Mm, so, um, so you have to keep replenishing the, the one that's not doing too good and I know I always get mad because so many blueberry plants are sold at Home oh, Depot yeah. and Lowe's and they don't tell people that, okay, you're going to lose them in one year. <laughs> Pretty much get ready for that. And, and those are uh, my two eggplants. I've got a um, Japanese or an Asian one and a regular plant. Eggplants are growing in a nice, nice green ground cover, which is? That is purslane. Or purslane came from seed. Well, so purslane is a weed, and I let yes. it go to seed. And uh, it many. is a 
It is a succulent, so if you don't like juicy type things like that, mm -hmm. you might. But it's it's very nutritious, and look at how well it likes the heat. Yeah, does not mind the heat, does not mind anything. So, so one other thing Things to be more. said on this subject here about the pots and the blueberry and all, mm -hmm. is uh, almost all of my pots have a reservoir on the bottom. I take the pot, if it has no drainage hole, mm -hmm. and I drill a hole, you can see the hole here, mm -hmm. uh, uh, up from the bottom. Ah. Then I build a structure above the drainage hole, and I with whatever junk I have that I can use to hold it up. Then I put landscape fa fabric over that. I run, I have a uh, wick, which would be, the best thing is a column of earth, which you can make by taking, uh, make a tube with uh, sunscreen fabric or something else that won't rot. A cotton sock will not work. It won't make, won't let make it through a whole season before the sock rots out. Hmm. But anyway, you have a, between the soil here and the reservoir, you have a wheat wick. Hmm. And then uh, you water it, and the uh, overflow comes out the drain mm -hmm. so that the rots, the roots don't sit in the, the water. But the wick will keep the um, mm -hmm. moisture uh, constant wow. in the. Every single pot you have that? Uh, the smaller pots and all? 90 some percent. Wow. That's a lot of work. Not the. Uh, not the uh, herbs, mm -hmm. but all of these and the, the these and these. Oh. Uh, not the not this one, but see that had a drainage hole, so uh -huh. that you'd have to do something different with that. Although you may have to do that. Um, anything that's dependent on me of dragging a hose around is in a tenuous position, and <laughs> so with the uh, reservoir. You probably have at least 24 hours of reprieve before the yeah. plant croaks. And mm -hmm. if the, uh, a pot dries out, problem too with pots is that uh, if you let the pot dry out, mo most of these soils, planting medias, are sort of like hydrophobic, meaning that <coughs> when it dries out, the planting media shrinks. And then when you put the water in, it doesn't go into the soil. It runs down the void between the soil and the pot. So it mm -hmm. runs straight through, and the plant never gets a drink even after you yes, do water. Yes, I've had it. that issue. Mm -hmm. So um, with the reservoir, uh, the water, some water stays there all the time, and it has to be really dried out before the reservoir is consumed. And then when you water it, it fills the reservoir and the soil will rehydrate better than, I mean, if you have a pot and it dries out, you really almost have to stick it in a bucket. Wait till it stops bubbling in order to hydrate that media that's in there because um, it, when it shrinks, it, the pot will not hold water. So um, nearly everything in here does. I mean, that one, all of these barrels uh, all have reservoirs in the bottom. All of the mints have reservoirs oh, wow. on them. And then so this was a uh, asparagus bed. I had asparagus every foot or so, and I've lost most of them. I didn't want moisture up against the shed, so I filled it with rock, gravel, and it doesn't hold water terribly well. Mm -hmm. And I added a couple lines of drip to uh, try and get it to, to hydrate better. But... Um, it's still not getting enough. So and there's um, the yarrow here. Yeah, it's pink. It's a bright pink, so it has, obviously hasn't flowered yet. But pink yarrow and daylilies, you said. Yes. And that's a pink over there, and those are that's a rose of Sharon. Oh, this is another rose of Sharon. Yes. Okay. And that I think pretty much covered the whole loop. Right. Did we yeah, miss anything? So. Yeah. 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 My squash and my melons. <laughs> these were these were my um, what uh, I had such a tro problem with the earwigs and the cell bugs eating those. But anyway, and I've got traps all over the place. 
got, uh, those are uh, okra. I've got three of those. Oh, I could not get okra to grow from my seed. You could not? No, never well, sprouted. I ended up buying it, and I look, that one died. Hmm. Yeah, I ended up buying oh. the okra. Yeah, my seed would not sprout. So that is it. I love these apple trees. Cannot wait to see how they turn out in a couple of years. And let's see what else. I think we covered most of it. So there you have it. Enjoy the video.